let's do some bad conversions for the greater good. So let's be honest, no one sets out to do bad conversions, but most of us aren't that experienced. So it's kind of unrealistic for us to look at all these awesome conversions that we see on the internet and go, yeah, I want to make that. It's something that takes heaps of skill and practice. And before you can make anything good, you've got to make a few ugly things. Just like painting, your first models aren't going to look good. So you got to start somewhere. All right. For this project, I will be kit bashing these goblins from Goblin Town from the game Middle Earth. My intention is to give them armor. All right. I have three approaches. The first one is kit bash them with Moranas or Moran and Orcs. The second one is to kit bash them with Moria Orcs. And finally, I want to do some custom sculpting on their armor and I want to make my big army leader really unique and different. For these kit bashes, I'm just taking each model and I'm sizing it up next to each other. Obviously the scale's a little bit off, so I can't pick any piece, I need to be a bit more selective. For this first one, using a Moria Orc and a Goblin, I decided that I would just be taking the legs and the head. So with my X-Acto blade, I just cut the legs off each of them, cut the head off each of them, and then it was simple as gluing them on. I also just shaved around the bottom of the, the torso to make it a bit more smooth. Obviously there's some big gaps here, but I'll come back to that later on. For the next one, I decided that I would do a leg swap, an arm swap, and give it a bit of armor. The Moria Goblins or Moria Orcs come with these really cool shields, and I wanted to use them in a unique and different way than you normally see them. I think this is a really good thing to do in conversions, it's something that is really easy, just takes creativity and not actual skill. So I just took this shield and I chopped it up and I used that as an armor piece. I cut off the arms and swapped them and cut off the legs and swapped them. Alright, that's a good example of my Moria conversions. Let's move on to the next one using the Moranin Orcs. So these ones are at much different scale. The Orcs are huge compared to the Goblins. So that's not necessarily a bad thing for these Goblins. They're very forgiving in the sense that they are kind of deformed and their proportions are kind of off. Some of them have huge arms and short legs, so I'm really leaning into that with these orc conversions. Alright, to start here, I decided to go for a head swap and an arm swap. I really like the idea of this goblin just having one huge arm with a huge weapon that does all his fighting, and the rest of them kind of tiny and, and shriveled up. I'm using my X-Acto blade to cut all of these things here. Now the reason behind using an X-Acto blade rather than clippers is that clippers are going to damage one side with the pinching that they do. By using a blade it keeps both sides of the cut looking good that can be used for other pieces in case I change my mind on what I'm kit bashing. For the next goblin, I decided I'd do a head swap and two arm swaps. To do this, I just held the models up next to each other and kind of saw where they overlapped and what I wanted to make. Again, it was as simple as just using my X-Acto blade, slicing off both arms, slicing off the heads, and just gluing them back together. We're coming up to my third approach, the ones that I'm most afraid of, the ones that are requiring green stuff. I really haven't used much green stuff before in the past. So, I'm going to take a step out of my comfort zone and do something that I'm not expecting to look good because I simply haven't done it before and don't have the practice, but I would rather have a converted model that looks kind of average and a bit, sh a bit bad than something that's just the exact same as everyone else's. I hear all the time that people want to do these conversions, they have these awesome ideas, but they don't want to risk messing it up, so they don't end up doing it. And that model just sits on a shelf waiting to be converted forever. And that's the exact reason why you need to do bad conversions. No one on their first try is going to make the best model in the world. We see all this amazing work online from people who've been doing converting for ages and just want our work to look like theirs straight away. It takes practice. We have to start with our practice from somewhere. My challenge to you, viewer, is to pick a crazy ambitious conversion project that you have in your mind 
and just do your best. Even if it looks bad, it's for the greater good because you're getting better at converting by doing that. Alright, with those green stuff ones shaped, let's get to the Goblin King. This is the one that I was most afraid of doing. This model's super awesome in-game, but the model to me just feels a little bit lacking. I decided I'd do a few things. I wanted to make him the war version of this model. So, I need to give him a way cooler weapon, and I need to give him some armor. I'll also add a cape on, just because they're cool. I decided to start with the weapon. I cut his elbow, this took a little while. I used my pin vise to drill most of the holes in and then just finished it off with my knife. And then I was just holding it up and trying to see how it would fit in, but I found that was kind of difficult. So I broke off his other hand and drilled a bit of rod through it. I would just use that as a guide while I'm positioning his other arm. When I kind of got the idea of where I wanted it to be, I just drilled in a pin and put that arm on. Now, after the glue is cured, I mixed up some green stuff and I just went in and tried to fill in the gaps as much as I could. Now, it's not smooth at this point, but that's alright because I'm going to revisit it later and smooth it out more properly. To make the shaft of the axe, I was thinking outside the box. I didn't really have any dowel laying around my house and didn't want to go out and get anything. So I just improvised. I grabbed a bit of sprue, I cut off all the bits on the side, and then I just whittled it down. Looks like a really cool piece of wood, I don't think anyone's guessed that it was just from sprue yet. So, with that all shaved, I cut a slit in it, and I shaped out the head of the axe. I did this by holding up the model and comparing the size, drawing it in pen, and then just cutting it out with my blade. I then went and shaped it further and sharpened the edge so it actually looks like a weapon, and it looks a little bit worn as well. I glued that on, and I took a bit from the original weapon and glued that on top, kind of like an homage to it. With the arms in place, I cut that shaft in half where I wanted his hand to be, and I just pinned it on either side so that it was rock solid. Next up was the armor. There's no going back from this point, I mixed up a big blob of green stuff and just slapped it on his face. This was scary, but it's the first step to doing my bad conversion that I'm hoping makes me better. After putting it on, I just shaped it with my fingers. For this, I was drawing inspiration from the Gundabad Troll model produced by Games Workshop. I really like the look of it, and I think that it fits the, the lore and aesthetic of these goblins. So that's the helmet that I was trying to replicate here. After shaping it with my fingers, I used a tool and just cut some slits around the mouth and then some holes for the eyes. I was pretty happy with how this looked. Obviously it wasn't perfect, but to start out with, I was happy. I also went and put a strip over his shoulder with a few blobs to resemble a, a shoulder pad um, with some bolts on it. To make him a cape, I just drew out the shape of the cape, rolled out some green stuff and cut it out, and then I laid it over some brushes. Now this is a technique that I saw in heaps of other videos, so I won't take credit for it, but laid it over the brushes, gave a really cool wavy pattern, and then let it cure. Once it was cured, I just glued it onto his back. Now, the final step here is pretty important. It's filling all the gaps on all of the models, including the first ones I did. To do this, I swear by Liquitex Modeling Paste. It's kind of like a spackle type thing, um, but it dries slightly flexible and it's just pure acrylic. And it fills gaps really easily. I just paint it on really, really thickly and then smooth it out with a wet brush and take away the excess with that brush. It's so easy. Like, I don't know why anyone does anything else. I don't know if people just haven't figured this out yet or, or what, but if you want to fill gaps, it's a way to do it. God damn. All right, with all these smoothed down, the models are done. Now, I'm really happy with them. Obviously, there's a few spots that they could get better. Yeah, some of the, some of the arms didn't quite line up and some of the armor panels just abruptly stop, but, Really, for me, they're perfect. For gaming pieces, they're awesome. Now, 
For a starting piece as well, I'm really happy with them. After finishing these guys off, I went over and did heaps more. I ended up with 39 of these armored goblins, with 13 in each style. And after painting them all up, they look pretty good. Now, when I was painting these up, I actually painted 150 models in one shot in one day. It's a huge painting spree to do the whole army. If you want to check that video out, please do. So, remember viewer, sometimes you need to do things that look bad so that you can practice and develop those skills and get better. Alright, remember my challenge to you viewer, pick some crazy ambitious conversion project. Even if you don't feel confident, just go for it and see how it turns out. Until next time, have a good one. This has been Conquest Creation, thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, please like, comment and subscribe. I also have other socials, an Instagram, a Facebook, as well as a website. Feel free to check them out if you want a sneak peek of some upcoming content. Once again, thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you at my next video.